Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, as IT professionals begin to look at the next generation of storage, they've got some interesting choices as they either start to refresh their storage or augment what they already have. And now they're at a crossroads. Do they get a full-featured array or do they start going down the software-defined storage path? Joining me to help with the conversation, I've asked Gavin McLaughlin. He's the Vice President of Strategy and Communications with XIO. Gavin, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. So look, I've got my IT guy down here, and he's kind of facing this decision. And I think the first thing we want to get across is there's not necessarily like one bad decision. It's mm -hmm. going to vary depending on kind of where you are and what, what your organization is facing and things like that, correct? Yeah, it's a lot of different application sets. There's a lot happening. There's no one size fits all for storage. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of choice coming up for people now. So let's define first kind of what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So a full featured array, I would think of that as more of a traditional offering, right? Yeah, it's traditional offering where a lot of the work is done inside the storage. So things like application aware snapshots, asynchronous replication, and it's where the control plane and the data plane for storage live together. Right, and, and of course the problem with that sort of a environment is if this is vendor A and this is vendor B, and this is vendor C, each one of those triggers somewhat differently, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, so that's where software-defined storage came about, right? That's one of the reasons for software-defined storage, but it's also that a lot of intelligence is now being duplicated. So a lot of people are looking at it so they don't have to buy the same functionality twice. Right, yeah, and you don't want to do that either. Yeah. So now, software-defined storage essentially ab abstracts all those data services that you just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. And puts it globally, so we end up with something that looks more like SDS here, mm -hmm and uh, A, B, and C there, right? Yeah. Now, how do we help people make that decision? Where do you think you, know, you might be a, a candidate for a full-featured array versus software-defined storage? I think one of the key things is a lot of people move into a fully virtualized environment. Obviously, if you've got it fully virtualized, it's going to be easier to bring in an abstraction layer. But at the same time, there's a lot of people building discrete application sets. So, uh, for example, we see a lot of OLTP systems or data warehouses where software defined is a good fit because it's all in one stack and therefore they want a single point of control, but to give them more flexibility on the back end, as you just said. Okay. And then going with the full featured array, that might be maybe I'm getting ready to do a, a full storage refresh and I want to, uh, you know, I can start with one array and so this management issue is less of a deal and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's the, the, the sim there can be less pain in moving from one fully featured array to another one. Right. But actually, what we're seeing in the marketplace is this is a good time because you've now got a lot more choice. Right. Um, and you're not then locked into a particular a vendor and you can get back to you know right. using a vendor for what it's good at. Well let's say I'm 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 decide for some reason to go down this path. I want to let software defined storage maybe mature a little bit more, things like that. So I want to start down the full feature to raise path. How do I get over here at some point later when I decide I'm ready for software defined storage? It's a really good point and it's actually a bit of a problem in the industry. If you look at the majority of units that have been sold in the in the fully featured marketplace they're much you know, like the software defined storage layers that you draw out, that there's a control plane at this point and there's a data plane, which is where the actual storage takes place. The problem that's happening is that in the majority of systems that are out there, if you take away the control plane, you've just got some dumb disk just sitting there. It's not going to protect itself. And right. You look at the core underlying requirements for software defined, there are predictable performance and predictable reliability. Mm -hmm. And if you're just using some dumb OEM dish shelves here, you're not going to get that. Right. So the problem is to move from here to here, traditionally, you're going to have some pain. You're probably going to have to buy a new storage system. And, and so almost these are almost too tightly integrated in legacy systems. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. So what is important, and, and one of the things we believe in XIO, is to be able to separate this with no pain whatsoever. So okay. to be able to strip off the headers, Okay. Uh, you know, quite often they're x86 servers. Go and use them for something else. Right. Strip them off and then actually have a, a data plane that does give you predictable performance and predictable reliability. So it's you know, a way to draw that using your diagram. It's kind of a bridge between these two worlds. Okay. So if you are waiting, let's say 12 months for things like VVOLs to come into maturity, sure. that you can actually make that transition without going to have a very painful conversation with your CFO. Right, because you don't have to replace, because like you said earlier, if I, if I, this is too tightly integrated, I basically have to throw that out just to get the software to find Absolutely, storage. and we're seeing a lot of people that are, are keen to go down this route, mm -hmm. but they're just holding off right now to, to see what happens in the marketplace. So being able to have that flexibility 
and a better word probably is adaptability to move between these two worlds is absolutely critical in storage. Okay. One last topic that's a pet of mine is as you get into the software defined storage, I, my fear is a lot of times people translate that as a license to go buy the, the lowest uh, cost you know, kind of piece of junk array on the market. The, the quality and what the hardware can do still matter here, don't they? Absolutely. Um, a good analogy is a building foundation. Um, I recently criticized, I had my house rebuilt part of it, and I criticized my builder for actually being underground and not having a single brick for like six weeks into the project. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell are you doing? He said, no, you don't understand. I can build you the most beautiful house that looks fantastic in the world. And if the foundation's bad, you're screwed. Right. It's going to fall over. Yep. And it's made me think about this. It's a good point about software-defined storage. You know, when it comes to software-defined storage, the hardware still matters. Think of it as the foundation in your house. Right. You're not going to just put anything in there. You're going to make sure it's done properly so you can build it up. So yeah, using commodity hardware, it'll work. But would you buy a house that was built on a shaky foundation? Probably not. Right, so you still need quality and reliability here, basically. Yeah, it's, it's about that predictability. Predictable performance, predictable reliability. Yeah. And using the appropriate tool for the job. So right. in some cases, maybe hard disk, some cases, maybe flash, some cases, maybe a combination of the two that's right. intelligently moving. But it's about getting that solid foundation in there. Great. Well, Gavin, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you, George. And thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for more features from Storage Switzerland.